Hey, this is Thomas Q. Jones, former UVA All-American running back, and you're listening to The Jerry Ratcliffe Show. Wahoo wah. Welcome to The Jerry Ratcliffe Show. I'm Chris Graham, and Jerry has worked his magic, as he always does, here for our podcast and securing us a very special guest here, appropriate for ACC Tournament Week, Jerry. Yeah, Chris, uh, really excited about this. One of my favorite guys of all time, sure um, that feeling is mutual throughout Wahoo Nation, and uh, we're talking about the MVP, the Everett Case uh, winner of the 1976 ACC tournament, Wally Wonderful Walker. Wally, how's everything on the West Coast? Yeah, it was good. Uh, shockingly, in Seattle, it's a little gray and overcast, but we're, we're, we're dealing. Um, <laughs> I, I mentioned to you before, I had my hip replaced just a couple of days ago, so I'm not, I'm not moving far, but, but it feels okay. Oh, you look like you're in pretty good shape for a guy. I, I'm in okay different. shape, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to be ready to get a little exercise. And the doctor says, uh, don't do that for, for a while. Yeah. You got to take it a little easy, uh, which I know is not in your vocabulary. No, it's, uh, it, 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 I like to be doing a little something. And Seattle Golf Club, I'm looking at right here. I kind of like to get over there, but that's, that's a ways in the future too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Park Hill will come out and keep you company. On the he, he, he's good at that. He's really good at that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I see him in some good places that usually are, are, are around golf. Yeah, he said you've taken him to some of the, the best courses he's ever played. So, uh, Well, we had a, a, a great outing, which I reminisce a little bit, uh, with, with Barry and Tony Bennett. And our host was Tom Farrell, uh, who, who just recently passed away. He's a wonderful guy. It was my year at UVA, class of 76. I uh, was a member of Augusta, and, and Tom hosts us down there a few years back. And, uh, you know, Tony's one of those guys. I don't have to tell you, any Wahoo fan or you guys this, but he, he barely picked up a club and went out and, you know, hit him straight and hit him well. And he's just, uh, you know, he's just he's one of those guys. He's a good athlete and good competitor. Uh, yeah, I hear he's a really good golfer. And, uh, he, he won't talk much about it. He, he, Tells us how much he loves the game, but he doesn't really say much about his personal game. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago uh, when Farmington opened up its new short course, and I played with Bowen Sargent and uh, his assistant and, and, and uh, another fellow. And, uh, you know, I played okay for me, and we all we played uh, pretty well. And we met uh, Rob McNamara, the then Farmington pro. Uh, he's moved over to Keswick now, but he uh, he came over and wanted to see how we did. And he said, he said, uh, guess who holds the course record on this new course? It was only about a month old, I think. Uh, I said, probably you. And he said, no, he said, Tony Bennett. <laughs> so. Well, uh, so we're talking about Barry. Tony and, and Barry were, were uh, neighbors, close neighbors, just a couple of doors away when Tony first moved to Charlottesville. So I think they got out there a fair amount. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. What well, uh, what was it? I know uh, Tony and his dad. Uh, that was one of their dream. One of their dreams, really, is for them to play at Augusta. Uh, what what was that like watching them play? Well, uh, they went on a subsequent trip. I think after the national championship year. Oh, okay. so it was different. But, but this was this was prior to that. This was where Barry and, and Tom Farrell and Tony and I played. So, well, Tony lobbied on national TV with Jim Nance to get him on. So. Uh, right. I, I see Jim, although he, from what I can tell, Jim stays really busy because uh, Jim's a member at a club called Cypress Point, where I'm also uh, very honored and lucky to be a member. So I, I, I see him down there, and I hope to get some of our, our, our Wahoo friends out there to play too. Yeah, that would be cool. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Uh, we're here for basketball. <laughs> are we? Are we? Okay. <laughs> uh, and you can't mention Virginia basketball without mentioning Wally Walker, that's for sure. Uh, retired number, number 41 for, uh, any newcomer of Wahoo's out there that might not be familiar with his deeds, but, uh, in, uh, 1976, Wally was, uh, one of two Cavaliers to receive the Everett Case Award in the ACC tournament. Uh, we're talking about ever, I guess. And, um, Winning the MVP uh, on the guy who essentially put the ACC basketball on the map, Everett Case from NC State. Um, 
Wally scored 21 points and grabbed seven rebounds in the championship game against North Carolina. Uh, he averaged 22.1 points during the 75-76 season. Still ranks as the sixth best in UVA history. And uh, we're later taken fifth, uh, the fifth player in the 1976 NBA draft by the Portland Trail Blazers. And uh, eventually went on and played for the Supersonics, Super Seattle Supersonics as well. Had a nice career. And, uh, uh, I mean, you carved yourself uh, a niche in UVA history with uh, not only that, that those three days, Wally, but uh, that senior season was pretty spectacular. Well, it, it was uh, – I was healthy, and I, I wish I – uh, I can say I was my 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 previous two years, but I played, and there's no excuse. You got, the games are scheduled. You got to play the best you can. But I did get healthy, and of course, uh, we had a a pretty good group uh, as well. A lot of them were younger. We had a couple of freshmen first years coming in and playing, contributing. And Bobby Stokes, and I was Fulton, Steve Castellan, and then uh, Dave Kester's, Mark Ibrani were, were were sophomores and had really improved. So Billy Langland and I were the long and tooth old timers. And, you know, that it, it really was a pretty good team. We started slowly, but uh, we knew we had something. And uh, I certainly played better than I, than I had the previous two years by, by a lot. And uh, I should have, it was a senior year and I was healthy. Yeah. And, uh, some people may not know that you had uh, two knee operations. Uh, three. Three. Oh. <laughs> two right before my second year and one after. And then the leg just got so darn weak that it stayed swollen throughout the whole, my whole junior year. I used to keep it wrapped 24 seven because of the swelling. And I used to stop once a week in between classes to go to Doc McHugh's office so he could drain it. Uh, this is wow. during the season. Of course, nowadays, I don't think I let anybody play with that amount of fluid on a, uh, on a joint, but uh, it didn't matter. That's, I, I was going to play and that's uh, it just was, didn't get stronger until that, that, that off season. That had to affect you. Well, I did. I, I certainly I wasn't as quick. Uh, I, I, I I was a pretty good leaper back in the day, and I lost some of that. I got it back uh, when I got healthy, but uh, I just you know I had trouble really kind of stabilizing because the leg was weak. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I played okay at stretches, but I was really inconsistent. I, you know, I had some just games where I just I, I wasn't there. That uh, that season, Wally. Um... A lot of people said that things kind of turned around for you guys. I get, I don't know if it was your last regular season game down at Carolina, um, but uh, they, they said that uh, even though you guys lost that game, that uh, you gained a lot of confidence. Well, we, we did. And the last month of the season, we were pretty good and our schedule was tough. And uh, But we lost at the buzzer uh, against North Carolina. So knowing that and the confidence that gave us, you know, did carry forward into the tournament. But people had forgotten. Maybe I'm, I'm one of them. I shouldn't have forgotten. Our last regular season game was a home game against Virginia Tech. That year was a really good team. They were ranked. Uh, they were an NCAA tournament team. And we beat them in overtime in, in Charlottesville. Obviously, my, my last home game, uh, my senior, senior night. Um, so, really, if you count that, we beat four straight ranked teams, four straight NCAA, well, Maryland and NCAAs. But we, we were a pretty darn good team at, at, at that point. Yeah, let's talk about uh, some of your teammates. I, I know uh, in the documentary that the ACC uh, currently has, a 10-part documentary about ACC tournament, uh, one of your teammates uh, got a lot of time, uh, Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's that, that nickname finally got public. Uh, it, <laughs> he, he earned it. Uh, it's what we called him, and, and that, it, was, it, was, it was on the money. Looking for a great dining experience in Charlottesville? Look no further than the Aberdeen Barn. The barn has been family owned and operated since 1965, with Terry and Angela providing great atmosphere and mouth-watering food at Virginia's Big Time Steakhouse. Enjoy the fine dining or relax in the Sportsman's Bar, a fantastic place to wind down and socialize, surrounded by flat screen televisions tuned to the latest sporting events. You never know who you might bump into at the Aberdeen Barn, where all the greatest Cavaliers have dined over the decades and keep coming back for the delicious menu and good times. 
Check it out online at AberdeenBarn.com or call 434-296-4630. Yeah, Mark Alvaretti, I guess he was a sophomore that year, I believe. and uh, He was. Yep. Pretty physical, pretty physical dude, right? Well, he came in and started right away as a freshman at center. And then when Otis Fulton came in, then the next year, Otis, you know, came in as, as a center and, and Mark slid over to his natural power forward position. But yeah, he, he always battled. He, he was a little crazy. He, he would scream and yell and get emotional and uh, help get us all fired up. Some things haven't changed. Some things have not changed. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be one. Uh, he, he brought a, I guess he and, he and Otis both brought a real physical presence to the, to the team, right? Well, we had a big team, yeah. Uh, we may not have been the quickest team, but we played mostly yes, half court. We were a 6 11 center, six time power forward. And I was, you know, six seven three man. But we were one of the, you know, the bigger teams in the conference or, or anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, marvelous backcourt. Uh, Terry Holland said at the time that he, he couldn't imagine anybody in the league having a better backcourt than you guys did. Uh, Dave Kesters has really not gotten enough acclimation throughout both the tournament special and uh, all the reminiscing. Uh, and Billy Langlo has, and, and deservedly so, but Dave Kessler's kind of been forgotten. Bobby Stokes got some notice, and he was a, a key part of it too. But those are two really good, strong, smart guards that uh, are always in control, and uh, Dave just hit every open shot, and Billy made every play. Yeah, I, I was uh, impressed with some of the passes they saw uh, – They. Uh, showed on the documentary of him getting the ball to some of you guys. Oh, you the, no, no doubt. And one of the Washington papers, there were two papers that time. I think it was the, the non-post. I think the Washington Star, you know, called our backcourt, you know, some name, certainly uh, denigrated them as being slow. Uh, and that, that became some of a cause. The ACC tournament special talked about, you know, me not making all first team all ACC. And that became – but. There was some other criticism going into the tournament, uh, and the slow backcourt was one of them where there, there, there was a, a fair amount to prove. Oh, absolutely. Um, you had a great senior campaign, obviously, uh, averaging over 22 points a game. Um, did you feel slighted uh, when the all-ACC team came out and you were uh, overlooked? I mean, I, I, I would have yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, for sure. I, I thought, it, uh, in fact, I've indulged myself a little bit. I've gone back and looked at old stats. Uh, and I, I knew I had a good year, uh, but my my ACC numbers are actually much higher than my, my regular season numbers. I, I yes. had 25 something in the ACC play and I had a lot of double doubles and was our leading rebounder. And uh, I've said this to my coach, Terry Holland, who I have great respect for and helped me so much. Uh, the, the, the fact that the coaches named me the top defensive player that year was about as big an upset. Some would say more than us winning the ACC tournament because <laughs> I, I was a terrible defender uh, prior to that. And Terry got me going some the previous year, my, my junior year, but uh, the fact uh, I, I was a pretty good defender on, on, on a good defensive team. So anyway, a long way of saying, yes, I, I thought I deserved that. I, can't, I can still remember this day. Uh, you go, I go to Newcomb Hall uh, to read the newspaper. They, they, they have them on the racks there. And I, I hadn't heard. Uh, I opened up the paper to, to see who had been named first team. And, of course, I wasn't there. And I could see I was the, the, the sixth name listed, the first name listed on the second team. Well, you know, that's a kiss your sister type uh, metaphor. Uh, but, uh, no, it, 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 it hurt uh, for sure. Yeah. You said you weren't that great a defensive player, but in, in the tournament you held you held uh, Maryland star John Lucas uh, to a five for fifteen shooting performance and twelve points, and then held Walter Davis from Carolina five for thirteen and ten points. Uh, well, I had it, but my senior year again. Whoever yeah. decided, I think it was the coaches named me the, top, the team's top defensive player. Right. Which that's that's where the upset came in. But but prior <laughs> to that year, I was I was solid my senior year. Uh, and, and Terry demanded it, and uh, it really helped me. I'm glad he, he was there to demand that of me because it made me a much better all-around player. But prior to that, in fact, you know, when I did the, the, the show with uh, Packer and, and Durham, I said, would you guys please quit running that promo of David Thompson doing the spin move on me where I'm like in a different zip code. He spins, <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking over to, to the left. All, he's going to the best. I'm, I'm 
I'm barely in the frame by the time he gets there. <laughs> but that was the year before. David Thompson did that to a lot of people. <laughs> he did. He did. And I've said this a lot. I don't know who the second best player was in the ACC in my four years in Virginia. There were a lot of contenders. But it was no question who was the best player. He was so much better whoever would have been the second best player. And that might have changed you know, game to game, week to week. He was an incredible player and, and great guy. He, we were teammates on the USA national team that played in Russia the summer of 1973, which was, by the way, it was the summer after we lost the Olympics for the first time. And David just, just killed him. It blew their mind. We, we, we beat the Russians by 20, the same team that, that beat us in the Olympics the year before. Wow. I didn't know that. that that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, he was special. I, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody quite like him in my career. He was well, he, he, a lot of great athletes and, and leapers, but his ability to both leap and 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 hang in the air and, and still get a, a good stroke off in a shot uh, and from distance uh, is really unique because uh, a lot of times I thought I had good position on him. I thought I'd go up with him at least get a hand that close to the ball and maybe where he at least feel me or I'd bother it. And, and I, would, I would come down and he would just stay up and uh, effortlessly flick it uh, at, at the top of his jump. So uh, I'm as great as ACC players as we've seen. And certainly Michael Jordan is, you know, in the argument, if not consensus, greatest player of all time. I didn't see him do it like, like David Thompson did it and, or anyone else for that matter. Yeah. I, I can't remember who it was. I think it might've been, uh, Tom Roy from Maryland in the documentary that said that he was guarding Thompson and uh, he's six foot 10 and Thompson is like six, four, six, five, I guess, something like that. But um, he said, he, I, I'm standing in front of him with my arms straight up and he takes a jump shot and he keeps going up and going up. And all of a sudden his navel is right at my eye level. <laughs> he says, what well, are you going to do? Well, they ran that back door play. If you tried to deny him at the top of the key, uh, Norm Sloan, by the way, was assistant coach in that USA team that Dave and I played on, uh, you know, ran great sets where they'd clear out that backside. So if you tried to push him out, deny him a little bit, you know, he'd plant and go back door. And another and the thing you saw, yeah, were maybe his waist or maybe his shoes going by as you try to recover. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was always too late. I was always too late. Uh, what, was the, what was the team mentality going into the – the tournament that year, Wally. I, I think Terry had told you guys that there was no doubt in his mind that you guys were the best team in the conference and you just had to go out and prove it. Well, we, we were confident, and certainly you wouldn't think that looking at our record. We were 15 11 overall going in, four and eight in the, in the league. But as we just talked about, we, we lost in a buzzer beater at, at UNC you know, right near the end of the regular season. We just beat Virginia Tech at home. So we were, you know, and we were just getting better. The, the young guys were just getting more comfortable and better. And uh, you, you could see it. So there we had a chance to prove ourselves. And besides the whole ACC thing uh, for me, which I thought got made a little too much of in the, in the documentary, yeah, you know, the Washington papers call our backcourt slow. And uh, anyway, a lot, lot to prove. And fortunately, we had a form to do it. Yeah, no question. Uh, and it was a, a lot of people – at least younger Virginia fans may not recognize the incredible feat that you guys pulled off. And uh, uh, Coach Holland called it 120 minutes of near perfection or near perfect basketball. You guys beat number 17, NC State, 75 to 63, number nine, Maryland, 73 to 65, and then number four, North Carolina, 67 to 62. Um, I mean, it's just uh, an incredible run. Well, it, it is an aside, uh, too. In my four years at UVA, uh, I'd never experienced beating either NC State or Maryland. We lost every single game to them in, in, in four years uh, that I was there. We beat North Carolina a couple times, once down there, once once, once at home. So, uh, you know, we had, we had scar tissue there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and those were, you know, the, the two – Teams you just mentioned, Maryland and NC State, as well as well uh, documented in, in the documentary, were two of the better teams college basketball had seen in a while. Uh, well, it was it, 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 it's crazy, of course, to think about it now when we know uh, about March Madness and inclusiveness of 
64 plus teams that Maryland was a consistent top five team and, and, and didn't get there. Um, and they were just great teams, balanced and big and talented. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it, it's a, a footnote to history that I think, you know, current generation would, doesn't even quite believe. What, what do you mean they didn't go to the, the, the NCAAs? But, but there they sat. Yeah. I mean, again, people, a lot of people don't realize it. At that time, only 20, what, 25 teams made the NCAA? Or... Yeah. Well, they, they expanded it uh, 75 to 32. Right. Uh, so you know, the year we win it, North Carolina gets to go. But because we beat North Carolina, Maryland didn't get to go then as a top 10 ranked team. Uh, and you were a conference champion, and then they named some at large teams. Uh, so Virginia Tech would have gotten in uh, th- that year. Uh, remarkable three day run. Uh, what was it like? Uh, I mean, being physically pushed to the limits uh, three nights in a row against three of the best 20 teams in the country. And uh, I've gotten, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the great Bill Russell, because he lives here in the Seattle area. Uh, so I used to go to a science game with him and invite him to go with me every year and just listen with, to his wisdom. And, and one of the things he, he's been on record saying it, so it's not, not like he shared a secret with me. Uh, but you, all, all you do is you, you, you try to win the next game. Uh, I think he originally said it when he was, they, they the Celtics, I think when, when he, even when he was a player coach in 1969, we're down 3-1. Well, how do you come back from three one? Well, you, you you play, you win the next game. Well, we 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 felt like we had to beat NC State just to because we were good enough and we hadn't beaten them. But it was and then we got Maryland in their in their backyard and you know I, I don't think we thought a second beyond. I speak for myself, but that certainly was the vibe beyond. Hey, just stay present and, and, and play your game, and uh, here we are. Was it weird playing in Landover because the tournament had always been in Greensboro up until then? Yeah, I mean, we, we were nice, though, for us. I mean, it was closer yeah. and fans were closer and nice building, relatively new NBA building. Now, having said that, we were all used to Greensboro where we hadn't had the success, but Greensboro is fun. I mean, it was a great atmosphere always being down there. I mean, anybody that's ever been there can, can attest to that. So, it, it, but the reality was, it was, you know, there were seven teams in the conference. Uh, previously eight and, and half of them were out of common out of the state of North Carolina. So it, it was time to move it. Yeah. To, uh, I know Maryland and lefty felt that way. Uh, did the, the Virginia people feel the same way at that time? That uh, I, I don't just... know because we had really advanced very far. Uh, I don't know how much of a voice Virginia had from administration or fan standpoint. Uh, but, you know, just to, change the venue given the fact that previous year we were out in the first round the previous two years we at least my tenure we were out after winning one game uh, you know sometimes you just got to change habits how did, how did you feel personally about your game as you advanced from one game to the next uh, I mean you were on fire pretty much pretty much <laughs> I was in the zone you know I, I shot something like mid 50s from the field uh, that season. So, you know, I was making most of them uh, all year long, but I wasn't making them at a high sixes clip either. Uh, so, but I had games certainly where, you know, I was in that zone where, uh, you know, the, the question of, uh, of athletes always is what, well, why can't I stay in that zone? Why can't I be in that every time? Well, you, well for any sport for that matter, I, my golf swing doesn't quite stay there either. Uh, but you never stay there all the time, but I, I clearly was, you know, uh, in a place where if, if I took a shot, if it didn't go in, I, I was stunned that it didn't go in. I, I, I couldn't believe it didn't go in. So, uh, in fact, I was interesting aside, a, a small uh, anecdote, because they showed it in the ACC tournament uh, special. I practiced a move for years, since high school, where I go to the best to the right side, uh, but then somebody would come here and I turn around to my left and put up over my head to protect the ball. And I used to practice that shot, not an easy shot, but I never once used it in a game except for the ACC final game. And I missed it. I didn't miss that. <laughs> I missed that one. I said to my son, I practiced that shot for years. I used it one time. It, it didn't go. But Steve Kesslon <laughs> followed up and, and tipped it in. So it, was, it ended up okay for us. <laughs> 
UVA Orthopedics and Sports Medicine boast one of the finest teams of doctors in the country, and they're right here in Charlottesville to not only provide care for the University of Virginia athletic teams, but also the Charlottesville and Central Virginia communities. UVA Orthopedics has been a proud sponsor of the Jerry Ratcliffe Show for the past two years with numerous team members featured in weekly segments where doctors share great insight into various sports injuries, what causes them, how to treat them, and recovery time. Their team of experts are there for you and offer the best care to solve your health problems and get you back on your feet. Let their team of specialists get you back in the game. Oh, man. Um, going into the championship game, I guess you guys felt like you had a debt to repay and – I don't know how much you were actually thinking about uh, being slighted uh, by the ACC voters, you know, while you were playing, but uh, I'm sure. Oh, you I wasn't. I wasn't at that point. Uh, yeah. You know, Terry said something to the team beforehand uh, about, Hey, the only way we can do justice to, to, to me not making the first team was win the tournament, which again, I, I said this on the tournament special. It was nice of him to say that, uh, but I don't, I didn't sit there and think, boy, everybody's going to be really fired up now. <laughs> like, they care about that. It was, like that's a motivating factor. But, you know, I, I did have something to prove. Uh, you know, every game, the next our next loss is my last game. Uh, I did hope to have an NBA career. Uh, so, you know, and I want to do something for this university that, that, that I love so much and the great group of guys. So, anyway, all the right motivations. And uh, But the reality is, when you're in real time, all you're doing is worrying about the next play when you're playing. And in between games, you're worried about, you know, getting yourself ready to play the next game. And uh, Billy Langland and I, as roommates, uh, that Saturday, uh, our first ever NBA or yeah, NBA, ACC final uh, game, we, we woke up and said, how you feeling? I'm tired. How you feeling? I'm beat. Now, how, how are we going to play tonight? I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, you, know you spend the day getting yourself ready. So that, that's, that's where it was. Yeah, and Carolina had a first round bye, so they were only playing their second game. You guys were three, yeah. day, three nights and, and Colleges don't play so many, except in tournaments, so many back to back games. But when you're playing well, you really like playing back to back, not three in a row, but but two straight nights because you, you, you get a rhythm and a flow. You don't have too much time for other stuff to enter in. So I know a lot of less than it used to be, but back in the day, there were a ton of back to back NBA games, and I always welcomed them. but Three in a row was, was one too many for them because they were playing well in North Carolina. You're playing back-to-back -back games and relatively fresh relative to us. What well, was a huge advantage. Did it burn you a little bit that a couple of those Carolina guys have been chosen on the uh, Olympic team uh, and you had not, even though you had played? Well, that, that didn't happen until after the, after the season. Oh, that was after. Oh, yeah, okay. that was that, – that That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Well – I don't know what happened there. Uh, I, I did have international experience. I yes, was the fifth did. pick in the draft, and somehow the invitation didn't get to me uh, early on there uh, for the, the, the 76. Uh, well, that was year was 76, but there were 70 some invitations to Olympic trials that went out too. Uh, and somehow I, I wasn't in that, in that first group. And a coach was. Uh, yeah, who was that coach? Dean, yeah. Dean, Dean somebody. <laughs> Might have, been, might have been holding a grudge or some kind. <laughs> I don't know. I, I it, it worked out for me. I, I got drafted uh, as high or uh, probably higher than I expected. Uh, so, uh, fortunately, I had the experience of representing the country. There's, there, there is a, no greater honor uh, than putting that USA uniform on. So, uh, and, and to do it in Russia, we went in Russia. But, you know, credit those guys. They, they went won the gold medal uh, in, in Montreal. And so, it, you know, it all worked out. Um, yeah, number the fifth player taken in the draft that year. That's, he could do much better than that. Um, was was it Ivoroni they showed in the documentary that on that last night when you guys were so tired and putting ammonia tablets on, on his? Uh... You know, I heard that for the first time when I watched the tournament special. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yes, it was Ivoroni. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I I learned for the first time that he had a picture of Dean Smith in his locker. Somehow I missed that at the time. Uh, so a lot of learning happening uh, uh, during that documentary. Yeah, that's. I thought I had 
knew just about everything about the league. But uh, I, I keep the picture thing stuff. in his locker is a little scary. Uh, yeah, there, there, you know, okay, really? But um, <laughs> okay, you go, you go. <laughs> uh, Chris, you got any, anything you'd like to ask uh, our big guy here? Yeah, what's what's it like in those final seconds as as the seconds are click are ticking down, um, and and you realize and your teammates realize that you've done it. What was it like? Well, yeah, uh, I, I have a really clear memory, and I'll go into some specifics since we have some more time than I typically have, or you have, or maybe not, but you tell me. Uh, got plenty of time. Okay. Time. Well, Billy Langlo is taking the free throws, and now we've got a a safe lead and, and, it's, and there's only a few seconds left. There's no three point shot. We, we won the game. So and I'm standing down at the other end of the court so I can, well, there's a breaking stoppage in play. I can look out into the, the, the arena and see our fans and they're moving down. They're coming down closer and you just feel the, the energy. And of course, you know, you, you, I know a lot of them. I don't know all of them, but I know, I know a lot of them recognize a lot of them and just the look of pure joy on their face. Uh, you know, it hadn't quite settled in on me. I mean, on one level, I knew it. I knew we were, we were going to win the game. But just oh, just a release of, of joy, just yeah, I started seeing their faces. And what I remember in particular, I don't think I've ever told the story. My roommate my sophomore year was a guy named Scott Gardner, who's also the, the quarterback of the football team. And so we, we were good friends. <laughs> uh, and somehow he'd gone to Georgetown, and this is classic him too, and bought like a, a buffalo hat, one of those hats, furry hats that stand up but have horns on them. <laughs> why would you buy go? To, why would you buy one of those? Well, that's another question I, I don't have an answer uh, to. But inside the horns, he <laughs> attached go hoos. So there's a guy I know, my my old roommate, getting ready to poise to rush the court with his go hoos buffalo hat on, stand up. Hey, okay, that's a he was a funny guy, still is. Uh, and there he was. So, uh, and again, but the, I use the term in the, in the documentary, the rapture and your fans and so many people that stuck with us through thick and thin. And there was a lot of thin, frankly, uh, just to see them be able to, to take it in and be that close and then come enjoy the celebration was uh, well, that's a lifetime experience. What was I, I, I've, I've thought this for a long time, Wally. Now, I was too young at the time to appreciate it, but. The importance of this win in UVA sports history, it just seems to me I mean, a few years later after this, uh, Coach Holland recruits the number one player in the country to come to Virginia. You know, not long after that, Virginia hires George Welsh. The football program yeah. starts to turn around. You know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm putting too much into this, but it seems to me like maybe if this run doesn't happen, if you guys lose the first game, if you, if you lose the last game, what, maybe maybe the rest of that stuff doesn't happen. I mean, UVA sports came was put on the map with this win. Um, am I putting too much onto this? What do you think about that? Well, I, I don't know. I'm the wrong person to, to try to attach significance to it. Uh, it was so meaningful for us to be a part of it, and so proud to, to have been there for the uh, to help build a foundation. But I, I think you can draw a line. Would uh, Lamp and Raker have come the following year if we had demonstrated that we could be a, a league champion? Because those guys really got it going for the, the, the late seventies. And when Ralph have come, if they had got it going, because they were, they were a good team in the late seventies with, with, with Lee and Jeff playing together and uh, Terry Gates and, and, and Bobby Stokes still there. Anyway, uh, I've already was there for their, for a couple of, at least one of those years with those guys. So all of a sudden the program is solidified with a, a bit of a winning tradition. And now you start getting some of the top guys. Uh, the fact that UV had never won, an ACC championship in football or basketball at that point. I have no idea if George Welsh looked at that or not, but he gets all the credit for what happened with football. One, one interesting anecdote, and uh, it's a regret for me because I didn't do what I should have done in hindsight, but it, 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 it stays with me. Uh, so I got a ton of mail after we win the championship and uh, Cindy Dispenza was the, the secretary of the basketball office and she kept it all. And I, I read it, but uh, I got a long handwritten letter uh, from Jerry Claiborne. I don't know if you guys remember that name. The, yeah. the football coach at University of Maryland. Yeah. Maryland. He takes the time to sit down. It was like a three page handwritten letter to, to about, you know, everything about the, the performance and things. And I thought, 
this guy at the rival school, we just, we just knocked his school out of the NCAAs. Uh, and he takes the time to sit down and honor me by sending that letter. I'm like, well, here's my regret. I didn't, you know, the knucklehead 21 year old thought he was so busy. I, I didn't respond to the letter, which I, I, I'm not, I'm sitting here, you know, 46 years later expressing regret. I did see Tim Brandt, you know, you guys know the broadcast, long time ACC broadcaster who played for Jerry Claiborne at Maryland. This is a few years ago. Tim was on a game at, 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 in Charlottesville, JPJ. I said, Tim, I got to tell you a story. And he, and he was paused and said, yeah, that was him. That was him. What a, what a, what a great man. So anyway, that, that, that's an aside for what sports does. And I'm still touched that, that he took the time. But going back to right the question, the, the fact that there was a winning, something was established. And then George Welsh doing what he does to turn that program into the number one ranked team in the country. I mean, nobody saw that coming. Maybe no one saw us winning in 76, but have a, a top ranked football program. No way. Yeah, no question. Um, they, well, they did storm the court, and I guess you guys got carried all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> One well, guy, and, and I, I told this story uh, to uh, uh, Mark Packer and Wes Durham when I was on with them uh, last week. A guy stopped me, Jay, Jay, a couple years ago and said, do you recognize me? I'm like, well, frankly, no. Uh, so well, I, you were on my shoulders during the celebration. And, and he was a he was a strong guy then, but this is again forty years later. Uh, and said, Man, you were you were some strong dude because I was up there for a while, uh, but but I I don't think I said this to him, but I know I was thinking it. Uh, but in my defense, not recognizing you, I didn't really see your face. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't my angle. <laughs> <laughs> but but he he just literally everything was spontaneous. Not like we had any any, any practice in uh, celebrating championships. So he just. Hoisted me up, and uh, you know, th there we were, taking cut down nets. How in the world could you see his face? Yeah, right. <laughs> this is Chris Slade, former University of Virginia defensive end, graduate of 1993, back on the staff at UVA. Excited to be back coaching um, my old stomping grounds. You're listening to the Jerry Ratcliffe Show. Uh, back when I was at the newspaper, I uh, did uh, some stories on this over time, but. Uh, we ran uh, some nice pictures of uh, Gene Corrigan, who was the yeah. AD at the time and went on to become commissioner of the ACC. But uh, uh, handing you the, uh, I guess, the, the Everett Case Award, and you had the. the I, I'm, I'm pointing right at it right now, by the way. That, that same, that same. Oh, same, really? Yeah, we got it right here in my office. Yeah. yeah. Uh, championship net around your neck. Yeah. Uh, I, that's something you, I'm sure you can never forget the feeling. No. And uh, again, uh, of course we were respectful. Uh, Mr. Corrigan was such a wonderful guy and we much beloved amongst all the student athletes, including our, our team that to see him beaming to at the end to, to, you know, shake hands and present that was, a, was a thrill and honor. And you know, over the years I've gotten to know his whole family. Uh, and, and so anyway, no, that was, because, you know, he would recognize in a way that I'm sure I didn't at the time. And this, this may have some significance for us for us going forward. Yeah, no question. Chris? You were part of two NBA champions as well, and not mm -hmm. long after this uh, yeah. in Portland and Seattle. Ha compare the, the celebrations there and, and your feeling of accomplishment in those to, to the 1976. Yeah, I had a little less to do with it with those. Although I was a rotation player in Seattle and Portland, I was a rookie, played some. I was nine for twelve. I had, I'd forgotten this. I, I was nine for twelve in the final series, though. I did I did make most of my shots in, in, in our final series in Portland, uh, but they were not exactly prime time minutes. Uh, so, you know, it was cathartic in in, in a, some similar ways and some completely different ways. Uh, Portland. In 1976, 77, had never made the playoffs, never. So we make the playoffs the first time. Bill Walton's healthy, so we make the playoffs. But you know, I think we won 49 games. That, so we weren't a dominant team. The Lakers won our division. Kareem was the best player in the game at that point. We got to get through them. Uh, I think they swept us. So at least they beat, beat us the first three times we played them in the regular season. So there wasn't anybody, you know, similar in the sense that people are thinking, well, these guys, you know, they're they're healthy. They're gonna they're gonna win it all, but you know, we were really talented and, uh, you know, 
couple of ABA players, the ABA and NBA merged that summer before, which wasn't good for my pocketbook. Uh, but it, it got to Portland Trailblazers, Dave Torzik, Old Dominion from Middletown, Pennsylvania, and, uh, Maurice Lucas. And people have forgotten that this uh, bit of trivia in training camp for the Portland Trailblazers the championship team that year was also Moses Malone. Moses wow. was taken in the dispersal draft, but the, the Blazers could not afford to, to, to keep him. And in preseason, he wasn't starting. Walton and Maurice Lucas were you know, crazy. Uh, Moses, so Moses and I used to drive, we were staying in the hotel, we just got into town, we didn't, had no place to live, so I, we used to drive to practice together, and uh, while he was still with us, he, 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 he would call me homie, uh, because of that, uh, uh, our, our experience, my, my Virginia tie, but anyway, so he, he wasn't there, we were going to win it, and it was, it was a real outpouring uh, for the city of Portland to go from kind of off the map uh, never made the playoffs. So all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're the NBA champion. Interesting about that team because it was a it, it, it was a good team with a lot of movement uh, and a balanced team. We played the 76ers in the finals th- that year, uh, who had the, the most talented team. That was Dr. J, George McInnes, Jellybean Joe Bryant, my old friend, uh, Daryl Dawkins, you know, Colwell Jones, Henry Bibby, Lloyd B. Free, World B. Free, uh, Doug Collins. Uh, so anyway, a great, great, but it was a much more of a one-on-one team. So people stopped me for decades after, um, and often be more of a bar in New York city <laughs> where somebody caught me. Obviously we wouldn't know them. They would say, you know, that the blazer team you play on might've saved the NBA might've saved pro basketball because our ratings were terrible. Then our, our games weren't shown live in prime time. Uh, and I don't know if that's true. I think that's an embellishment. The game got better. And the, the interest grew too. But the, the reality was, you know, that the, the team kind of came out of nowhere. Not completely out of nowhere because we had, we had Bill Walton. Uh, but it, it was unexpected. And so there was a there was real outpouring of emotion. For me, uh, you know, still I, my emotional tie to the University of Virginia was much greater than it was for being a rookie with the Portland Trailblazers. But still. What a fantastic uh, experience. Now, I got traded to Seattle. The NBA is much better, much more pro- prosperous in almost every way. In 1977, November of 77, I got traded from the, the 10 and 1 Trailblazers, defending champion, best record in the NBA, to Seattle. The trade, the catalyst for the trade, and God knows they might have traded me anyway, uh, was the NBA dictated the teams had to cut the rosters from 12 to 11 to save money. So, 22 teams in the NBA, everybody had to get rid of one player by November, whatever it was, 12th or 13th. So November 11th, I get traded to, to the Sonics up the freeway uh, for, for draft picks. The Blazers get a first and a second round pick. They, they paid a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, Seattle has to cut a player, a guy named Mike Green. And so now we got 11 guys. So there are 22 teams with 11 guys, only 232 NBA jobs. So, you know, half of what, Guys get paid now here. But now, when I get traded there, the Sonics are two and ten. I helped lead us to the next, I guess, twelve games. Is it two and ten? Next ten games, three and seven. Yeah, I, help, I helped with that. So we're five and seventeen, and we we change coaches. We hire Lenny Wilkins, uh, who had been in the front office, and he came in <laughs> and took the team. It was five and seventeen, and 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 terrible. And Orange is losing. We would get killed. Same players, and we go to the finals that year. We lose the Bullets in 78 from a team that started 5 and 17 but without changing the personnel. Uh, so that was an incredible coaching job by, by Lenny, obviously. Well, we lose the Bullets in game seven in Seattle. Uh, by the way, Seattle had been in the playoffs but never gotten out of the first round prior to that. But they still had a parade for us. We, had a, we, we lose game seven, and the parade's already planned, so they have, we still have the parade. Well, it wasn't the wild, most wildly enthusiastic parade, but it's a parade. So now I'm in my third straight year of parades, by the way. Uh, downtown Charlottesville had one for us. Portland had one for us. Seattle. But now we're, we're going into the, the next season. And now our expectation in Seattle is, uh, and I'm rotation, I'm kind of the eight, eighth player, uh, backup three-man, is we're going to be a championship contender. Well, why wouldn't we think that? But our starting center then that year, uh, the previous year, uh, was a guy named Marvin Webster, the human racer, Morgan State. Marvin signs as a free agent with the Knicks. So, so we lose our starting center. Uh, 
So, so now what happens? Well, it wasn't unrestricted free agency at that time. The teams, if you lost a free agent and, and you couldn't work out the compensation, the commissioner would step in uh, to, to award compensation for uh, you know, the lost player. Well, by the way, in that, that offseason, we also traded for Tommy Lagarde. He was just in the tournament special. He played for North Carolina. So Tommy and I have been, been friends ever since. Uh, so Tommy became our starting center. Jack Sikma uh, moved over to the power forward. Well, I didn't move over. He, he, he'd been there the year before under Marvin. But what the commissioner decided, uh, the, the, the right uh, payment back for us losing Marvin was a, another power forward named Lonnie Shelton. Well, Lonnie played for the Knicks. He was, he was my year. Well, it turns out Lonnie was just a complete stud. Uh, so we're, we got off to a good start. We're really a good deep team. Lonnie and I are the backup forwards. Uh, and, and Lagarde and Sigma are the starting four and five men. Tom Lagarde is playing really well. Tears up his knee in a game in Philly. Uh, and, and, and Jack is struggling at that point at, at the power forward. So what happens? Jack moves over to center. Lonnie moves in the starting line as the power forward. Jack is shooting in the 30s at that point in the season, then goes on a roll and makes the all-star team as a center within just two months. So now the team is, we, we, now we got the team uh, that went on to, to win the finals. We had to win a game six on the road. We were down 3-2 to Phoenix in the Western Conference Finals to come home to win a game seven to play the Bulls again in the finals. So again, we, did, we had another parade. Uh, it, it was a really good one. Uh, but going back to where I started, I probably told you more than you wanted to hear about, about what happened back then. But How many people have had four parades in a row? No, that, that's, <laughs> that, but of course, the, the addendum of the story is my last two years in Houston, it, it, if it was a parade, it was a mirage. If people thought it was a parade, it was a mirage. Really, they were chasing us out of town because the, 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 uh, we, we, we were bad. And the second year of that, we shouldn't have been bad because it was Ralph's rookie year. Ralph's rookie year was, was really good, but Houston was trying to lose games to get the picks that they haven't get Ralph and Elijah on. Wow. Uh, I was intrigued by the, you were a teammate with Walton for that year. And uh, was he as, uh, what's the right word? Interesting then as, as he is now. He was, he was, <laughs> you know, uh, he, he embraced me. I, I, I got to Portland. I knew nobody. Zero. I never, never been there. Um, and, you know, he, he would just call me and we'd go get a bite. And he and Lionel Hollins and I were the only ones to live actually in kind of downtown Portland. Lionel and I were from the same building. So he and I rode uh, to and from a, a lot. But Bill was in a little different area, but, but, but not far. And so he'd have Lionel, we call him train, come over for dinner. Or, you know, I remember the Who was playing in, in Portland. He said, let's go. I got tickets. So he and I, so anyway, he, he was really nice uh, to take in a, uh, young rookie that really didn't know anybody or anything about about Portland, uh, but he he was wacky. I mean, he he just was, uh, and still is. I mean, people college basketball fans get to hear it a couple times a week, and uh, <laughs> but but always interesting. Uh, so it was never boring. And of course, you know when he played, you know he, he was just so great. Um, and I don't know if people remember this, but they, they should if they don't. He was an incredible passer. So you put him at the high post and you make any kind of cut, break open, the ball was there. I mean, it just everything moved so easily. What all, people may also forget, though, and Bill was an all-time great. He's got named the top 75 players of all time, MVP of the league the next year. But Kareem was so great. Kareem, you know, you, you couldn't do anything with him. We, went, we didn't double team back then in the NBA. No one was double teaming. So Bill just, we went in the game against Lakers and Bill would just go, uh, here we go. The big fella gets fired up for me. Well, UCLA connection, and he did. He just we would light him up, and it wasn't anything Bill could do to stop him. We, you know, ultimately we we beat him in a playoff series. Our team was better, but Kareem was in the seventies was just an incredible, incredible player. Uh, you mentioned that you were on the uh, Houston team when Ralph got drafted. What, what was it like being on that team uh, his rookie year when? You know, he was new to obviously the NBA game. Were you kind of a mentor to try to, since you had a, that UVA bond, trying to help? Well, him uh, I don't know, a mentor, but friend, I hope, because uh, I, you know, because I knew him some, but not well, and we didn't overlap. I was seven years older, but 
you know, so, so they had great respect for him and still do. Uh, but, but, you know, he didn't need, he didn't need mentoring help from me or, or anybody in terms of playing the game. I mean, the average, the average 21 and 12 as a rookie, uh, there aren't many guys average 21 and 12 ever. Uh, and of course, there are fewer rebounds now than there used to be. Uh, but he, Ralph was really good. He played center. Uh, you know, the, he had health issues later, but he was healthy then. I, I for me, uh, and Ralph may not even agree with this. I always liked him better as a center than I did as as, as a four man, a power forward, uh, because when when he's playing against centers and he, and he was in the low post, he was so quick. Uh, he was just even though at a, with the great size he had, but his skill level and his quickness, he was just such a hard matchup. I thought he was a harder matchup against centers than he was against uh, power forwards, which he. You know, he became a power forward when the next year when, when Elijah Wan came in. I wasn't there. I certainly was following and watching him enough. So, but he he was really good. The team was pretty good. Uh, and, you know, Ralph's first games, the national TV game, his first game as a pro. We I played in the Spurs. Yeah. I'm, I'm a starter. I, 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 you know, I go to train camp without a guarantee and end up in the starting lineup. I started the first 17 games that season. And then when, when Bill Fitch, uh, you know, took me out of the starting lineup. He also took me out of <laughs> playing at all, pretty much. I, I really didn't play again so much except garbage time until the end of the year. So the handwriting was on the wall. I, I don't think he was wrong. Uh, I, I was, uh, I lost some, some quickness. Uh, and uh, I, I took my, my boards for uh, graduate school <laughs> after that offseason. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, I'm look, I was looking at the stats. So, so um, uh, talking talking now, all these many years later, uh, Virginia's won two ACC tournaments since the '76 team. But for a lot of folks who, I mean, you know, even people my age and, and older, '76 is still that special time. You know, it, 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 I guess there's nothing more special than the first time. Do you, do you hear from alums, fans who you kind of share that sentiment with you? Yeah, you know. Uh... And I get asked that question almost every year by somebody in a public format like this. Uh, and, and my answer is similar, uh, which is one, I'm honored people remember it. It's been a long, long time. I mean, 46 years. I mean, 1976, I, I had no idea what, I don't remember what the 30, 1930 Wahoo team was doing 46 years prior. So <laughs> the fact that you guys were reflecting on it, that anyone remembers, I'm, I'm happy I remember uh, after all these years. Uh, it, it is really an honor, and the, the fact that anybody would would think that we had a hand in building what's now become a a, a great uh, you know, sports program uh, to go with the great institution it's always been uh, it's just a, a, a wonderful honor that I I can't express uh, well enough that anyway would think would think that or let alone articulate it. So I, I am surprised uh, when, it, when it comes up a little bit, but it's always gratifying, and, and the best part, and it always is is reconnecting with, you know, old friends. And, and I, I now, of course, the world's changed, but now with texts and emails and Zoom calls and, you know, stay in touch with, with uh, people I hadn't seen some cases or had contact with for years, if not decades. So it's, it's been a catalyst for that. And I'm, I'm very grateful that that's the case. How, what, what did 2019 mean to you and your fellow 76 uh, championship alums? Oh, it, just a catharsis. Uh, you know, I was, I was in Charlotte for the UMBC game. Mm -hmm. So felt that pain and just, I'm such a huge fan of Tony's and then just, the, and I was in Minneapolis too for the, the, the finals, but uh, just to see, you know, redemption has a negative connotation to it for some, but it may be the right word still uh, that the fact that Tony had always done it the right way. We had a great group of guys that did it the right way. And, and to get that positive reinforcement with a banner uh, is just, you know, I've got a, I got a little chill right now. Think about it. I was curious, where did the name wonderful come from in, in your thing? <laughs> yeah. I, I was reading in the, a little while ago and it said, uh, <clears throat> Walker who matriculated the same year freshman became eligible to play on the varsity level had been pictured in Sports Illustrated before ever scoring a point for the Cavaliers. Sports Illustrated's Curry Kirkpatrick, who I believe is from North Carolina. Yes. Wrote yep. in the fall of 72, quote, if you thought freshmen accomplished something in football, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
For every Archie Griffin at Ohio State, there is a Wally Wonderful Walker at Virginia. Did he give yeah, you that name? Or did Curry did. Me? And I, yeah. I know Curry. I know I've gotten to know him over the years. And in fact, I've heard from him about a year ago. And he was actually featured in the tournament special. He, he was quoted in one yeah. of the early episodes because he was a Sports Illustrated writer and, and was an NBA writer, writer later. I ran into him at a concert a couple of years ago. How, how about that for a small world? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and miracle, miracle, we recognized one another. So uh, there was that. But yeah, I didn't have that moniker until he, he threw in Sports Illustrated before I ever played a game. And, and the aside, they, they, because freshman eligible, they come out with a photographer and they take some pictures and they ran, they subsequently ran a picture. And the photographer says to me, We're hearing it's between you and another guy for the cover. And I'm like, I've done nothing here, you know. Can you just go back and tell them don't don't use me? Uh, uh, and, and again, literally, I didn't know until it came out whether it was myself or a guy named Walter Luckett. Walter Luckett was the cover guy. Uh, he'd been a great uh, high school player. I played against him a couple of high school all-star games. He went to Ohio U, and he was on the cover. Uh, but to, anyway, Curry. Now there there was a. A slight tie-in, which I didn't mind as much. The wonderful, ridiculous nickname. I guess it's meant as a compliment. But what does that mean, really? But there, there's a there's a player for the 76ers when well, they had their great teams in the, in the late 60s, championship team named Wally Jones. He and Hal Greer were the great backcourt, and, and Wally Jones was called Wally Wonder. So uh, there's some people because of that basketball tie-in. I grew up not that far from Philadelphia. Wally Wonder. Okay, that's a you know that at least has a basketball connotation to it. That I, I wasn't crazy about it, but it, it wasn't it wasn't so bad. Uh, but yeah, Curry Kirkpatrick, he did it. And it stuck for fifty years. Well, I guess I, I guess <laughs> here we are. We're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terry Holland, I know, is uh, very special in your heart as yep. it is mine, and and Chris's, and everyone else that has anything to do with Virginia basketball. Uh, how did he uh, recruit you? And, and just talk about your association with him throughout all these years. Well, yeah, he, he didn't recruit me. You know, he, he came after my sophomore year. I was recruited and played first year. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And Bill Gibson, I, I knew because uh, uh, I attended his camp when I was in junior high called Camp Gettysburg, where, by the way, Gus Gerard also went, Barry Parkhill. So Coach Gibson ran this great camp. Uh, up in the hills outside of Gettysburg, a lot of us got oriented towards UVA and, and, and Coach Gibson because of that camp. So anyway, I, I was nowhere. I wasn't recruited. No one knew about me. So when I blossomed late, and and he got in early because guy had told him to come. Uh, he just seen me play at a, at a pickup game at another camp. Uh, he, so that that got started. So Terry came, uh, got the job in the spring of my sophomore year. We'd had a bad year. We were a losing record again. I had two surgeries before that year. In fact, we'd had a terrible game against Davidson. I know I had a terrible game. We lost at Davis, against Davidson at home. Uh, so, you know, he was following the team and uh, would have known who we were, but certainly wouldn't have been impressed with what he saw firsthand by, by that game. Uh, but he came in and, you know, really instituted – we had an incredibly challenging, rigorous preseason conditioning program. So he set a standard early on, which is – you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to work like crazy and we're going to be really well conditioned. We're going to be physical. Uh, and, you know, we weren't very good because we weren't that skilled at the beginning of the year, but, you know, the fact that, that team that wasn't very talented actually beat North Carolina. Uh, we did that in Charlottesville and, and, and we came all the way back in NC state in the ACC tournament game. Uh, and that was the game after which, because we were down 20 something, I think at a half or so at some point where he said in half the game, yeah, you made us all proud. Now you guys, you know, hand yourself right. And next year we're going to be back here playing for the championship in this tournament. We just finished the year 12 and 13. Uh, we just lost in the first round of the AC and he's, here's the coach telling us we were going to be a, a contender next year for the tournament championship, the ACC championship. Well, we were looking around like, where's that from? But where it was effective and what he was so good at it, planting the seed. Like, hey, you know, I believe in you guys. You know, you, you keep working. You, you're going to get to a place you may not even realize you're going to get to. And I, I think that had an impact. I think, you know, we added some players, but 
the, the guys in that room said, huh, here's the guy who's come in, he's been with us all year, and he, he, he thinks we, we're better than we think we are. So I, I think that applied to next year. I know a lot of players uh, grow an affection for their coaches, and they say that they don't make a lot of life decisions without running it by their, co their head coach and just to get his opinion on things. Were, were you one of those kind of guys, or were, were you and Terry that close over the years? Well, we, we, we stayed in close touch. I, I would come back, in particular when I was still playing, that was until I was 30 years old, I'd come back uh, to, to Charlottesville in the offseason in the summer and always get together with him and, uh, and, and stayed you know, in touch with him throughout. Of course, during those years when I was in the NBA, Virginia was was rolling. Was you know one right. of the best teams in the country and number one for part of that. The ironic thing it's true for Ralph as well. Virginia, I'm not, I'm playing for the Rockets along with Ralph. 83, 84 season, we were playing this terrible team that's, that's trying to lose games. We weren't, but the organization was. Uh, and and Virginia gets to the Final Four in, in, in my off season home, which was Seattle. So yeah. I'm playing for the Rockets. Uh, we're just trying to get through the season and all the Virginia faith were out here in my hometown. Uh, our old friend, Frank Burke has stayed in my house. So Jerry, you, uh, so I've I, yes. put to good use. Uh, and, you know, they're out here without Ralph uh, for a team that gets the final four, which was a, a really great accomplishment. So anyway, uh, yeah, Terry, I, I'm saying as years progress, and of course this happens as a function of age. Uh, he wasn't that much older than, than than I was when he got the job in Virginia, just 12 years difference. Uh, but I had great respect for him, and, and he was a great coach and mentor. But, you know, as, as years unfolded, we became more friends than, than, than anything, and uh, I, I cherish that too. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, I thought it was great. I don't, I don't know if you saw the Virginia-Duke game a couple of weeks ago, but uh, with Krzyzewski coming over and embracing Terry on the side sidelines, I thought yeah. that was a special moment. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know Mike, some from over the years, we were on the USA basketball committee in the late nineties to pick the Olympic team, et cetera. And yeah, I know Virginia fans have, have a view and maybe different than mine. And we got to know him. I, I think he's a very gracious guy. And I hope he goes out in a, in a very positive way here. Yeah. No question. No question. Um, Chris, you got anything else? Got a lot of a lot else, but uh, no, this has been great. Gosh, this is yeah. We, we've learned an awful lot today. We got some 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 news stories here too. It's uh, from from memory from uh, from Wally here today. Absolutely, I, Wally. You said you learned some new stuff in the documentaries. Well, we learned some new stuff today talking to you. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Psycho. I hope there's nothing that can, can match with with the Psycho nickname though. It's, it's hard to beat that one. I tell you, it's hard to beat that one. I'm, I'm glad Lang Lang brought that one forward because it's one of those ones that's been under wraps now for, well, for 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 a long, long time, too long. It's been several ago. years ago, but I played uh, played golf with uh, Mark uh, Ivoroni over at I think it was at Wintergreen. We're in some kind of charity tournament. And at that time, he was into uh, uh, sports psychology big time. And, yeah. Uh, and we were we had gotten off to a really good lead, and I think we had birdied like five holes in a row. <clears throat> and he said, "Now, now, you guys, you know, you let's don't get overexcited here. You know, there's probably some bad something's going to happen. We're going to have a bad hole or something. So just whatever happens, just try to keep your cool." And the, I think the very next shot, he hit one into the woods, <laughs> <laughs> and he totally lost it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of squish and money thrown out the window right there, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Wally. It's been awesome catching up with you, man. Anytime, Jerry. Thanks for all you're doing for keeping us informed out here about what's going on back, back in Charlottesville with the Virginia sports. We re really enjoy it. We'll keep it up. Uh, all right. Hope to see you sometime down the road. Get I on. hope so. I mean, next year, I'm going to get back for sure. Uh, yeah, get, get that hip ready and get out on Yeah, the yeah. Get in motion. <laughs>